Role-playing games almost never have just a linear story to follow. You aren't bound by a lot of constraints, and you're very often free to explore the universe you're in, join different factions, and are given the opportunity to accept hundreds of side quests from virtually anyone. In Oblivion, there are some side quests that are substantially longer than others. Each faction you join unravels a brand new plethora of characters, each with novels worth of stories to tell about themselves. You can find one of the most sinister factions past the east gate of Shadenhall, in a very large excavation underneath an abandoned house. You'll find the Dark Brotherhood. How to get in is quite simple. Find an NPC in the game, murder him, and then purchase a room from one of the inns and sleep. You will be awoken by a man named Lucien Lachance, one of the leading agents of the Black Hand. He tells you that you sleep quite soundly for a murderer, and that they could put your heartless conscience to use. Once inside, you will already hear talk of two characters not mentioned before in the game. The first being Sithis, the deity the Dark Brotherhood worship and turn to for guidance. The second being a woman of divine and frightening power, known as the Unholy Matron the Night Mother. You can find her crypt in the city of Breville, underneath a statue of the lucky old lady, where it is a local custom to pray to the statue for good luck throughout the day. Don't bother trying to visit the crypt itself until you fully complete the Dark Brotherhood quests and contracts. There are extreme spoiler alerts ahead for people who have not played the game, so watch at your own risk. Once you've fulfilled all of the contracts given to you by Vicente and Ochiva, you will be ordered to kill everyone in the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary, including the two that gave you the contracts before. Lucian believes there's a traitor amongst the Black Hand, and anoints you to carry out a purification in order to cleanse the faction of the treachery. After all of your contracts have been fulfilled, Lucian will alert you that the Black Hand has been deceived, presumably by this traitor. The next quest involves a lead-on where the traitor might be located, you are tasked with journeying to the Anvil Lighthouse, where there have been numerous complaints about a horrid odor of dead bodies. Go into the Lighthouse Cellar, and you will most likely be disturbed by what you see. The first thing you'll notice are the fleshy, hollowed-out carcasses of dogs and sheep, their blood staining the wooden floor. Lockpick a door up ahead, and you will see a live but weakened and starved dog feasting on what appears to be his owner. Inside the room, you will be greeted by a candlelit shrine with a severed head on a plate, accompanied with the diary of the traitor. Read the diary. Within the pages, you will discover the traitor's insanity-induced scribblings and Cray's plan to infiltrate the Black Hand, act as a brother of their faction, and, when the time is right, slay the Night Mother. It doesn't stop there, though. The culprit's insanity has evidently gotten the best of him. Some pages contain jumbled words such as the rushed repetition of kill him, and a paragraph-long listing of colors that go from red, green, and yellow to the traitor furiously scribbling in his diary, black, black, black. At the very end of the Dark Brotherhood's main quest, the traitor will reveal himself in the crypt of the Night Mother. Upon killing him, you are rewarded with the supreme title of Listener of the Black Hand. Don't exit the crypt right away when she gives you the opportunity. Take a moment to look around. You'll see the Night Mother's physical corpse, along with five smaller, baby-looking corpses. To anyone not familiar with the Elder Scrolls lore, that probably won't make a lot of sense. Well, Sithis has another name. He's commonly referred to as the Dreadlord, or Dread Father. The Night Mother serves as his unholy bride. According to Dark Brotherhood legend, Sithis visited the Night Mother in her sleep and impregnated her with five children. A couple years passed, and Sithis, for reasons unknown, decided to test the royalty of his dear bride by ordering her to brutally slay her five children. When this happened, she was shunned from society. Word spread quickly and the people wanted to avenge her dead children and see her suffer the same fate. And eventually, they got what they wanted. She was murdered in her sleep. After a few decades, her spirit returned to a man that claimed he heard a disembodied voice, being the Night Mother. This was what the Dark Brotherhood lore eventually labeled the Listener. And he was the first of many. 
You can find books all over Tamriel, and both Oblivion and Skyrim that explain the legends surrounding the Night Mother. The Night Mother's Truth, written by Gaston Belfort, is the book to search for if you ever get curious. This book explains speculation behind her appearance, possible ties she may have had with the Thieves' Guild, as well as her involvement with a clan before the Dark Brotherhood known as the Morag Tong, an organization that was prevalent in Morrowind. The book tells that she was once a mortal, a Dark Elf with a highly respectable position known as Night Mother. This title was only reserved for the most honored and most feared female assassins of the organization, handpicked by Diedrich Prince Mephala himself. Once the Dark Brotherhood saw a rise to power, they ventured to their original burial site, where the remains were dug up and moved into a crypt hidden beneath the statue of the lucky old lady in the city of Breville. So the next time you journey to the city and ask for a grant of good luck upon the statue, just remember, you're not asking a favor from just any old lady. You're praying to a demon.